Hi, it's Charlene Sinjenko of Powerhouse Media Group. I'm here today with Carrie Dillon of Why Yoga, and this is the first in our series of accessible media interviews. And that's where we're bringing powerful Canadian leaders a little bit up close and personal to you to have access to them to answer, uh, ask and answer questions about living, learning, and leading from a very powerful place. Welcome, Carrie. Thanks. Thanks, Charlene. So, so happy to be here. So grateful for Carrie being our, uh, our, our first guest in this series. And uh, we have a bunch of questions that have come in from our powerhouse group via Facebook. But first of all, I just wanted to ask Carrie to tell us just a little bit about Why Yoga, where she is the president, and, uh, and also to chat a bit about her leadership role at at Y Yoga. Sure, great. Um, hi everybody. Uh, so I am the president of Y Yoga. I've been with the organization for about four years and so I've seen it grow. Uh, it's doubled in size. We have 12 locations between BC and Ontario um, and looking to kind of take it national and, and have health and wellness for all Canadians. Uh, that's sort of the, the big goal for mm -hmm. us. Um, yeah, I just I'm I'm really excited about bringing a Canadian brand um, and building that brand uh, mm -hmm. for all Canadians and to sort of touch as many Canadians as we can with uh, a really healthy, powerful sort of living. Yeah. yeah. When I uh, was fortunate enough to interview Carrie for our magazine, which you can find on our website, um, one of the one of the sentences that she said to me, you know, she's very passionate about growing people, profits, and projects, and I just love that because it really encompasses um, it encompasses in such a, a concise way what she feels she's she's good at and what she's passionate about, and that's something we talk a lot about with Powerhouse. And Carrie, I wondered if you could speak to um, how you know growing people. Um, I know a lot of people see you as as a leader, and uh, not only in the organization, but in your in your uh, the nonprofit work that you yeah. do as well. I was wondering if you could speak to that a bit. Sure. Um, for me, uh, Charlene and I were uh, chatting a little bit, and for me, it's really about supporting my team. Uh, it's never really been about me. It's always been about the organizations or the people that I'm around. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's about how do I remove those roadblocks, support them to be the best that they can be in the space that they're in and helping them grow to that next level, whatever that is for each of them, it's, it's quite different. Um, and you know, we had talked about that, that role model. Um, I've never really kind of thought of myself as a role model. I just, I show up, I, I live my values, I want to do my best and work really hard to do that and surround myself with people that are like-minded. Um, so really for me, it's, it's the connection to the, the organizations that I'm a part of and elevating them mm -hmm. and the people that I'm a part of and elevating them. Yeah, um, yeah my leadership isn't about me moving up the rung. Uh, it's really about everybody else. Yeah, I yeah. think that's so great. Yeah. It's, um, it's, you know, you, sometimes the best way to move people forward is to understand that, yes, it's about moving them forward, but it also is about something that's so much bigger yeah. than, than any of us. It's about the bigger mission and the, the bigger set of values. Um, so we asked our powerhouse group this week, and for those of you that participated in our poll, thank you very much, but we asked a number of questions, and um, before we dive into a few of those, uh, of course, we just finished um, International Women's Day, uh, and what Powerhouse is trying to do is bring just a little bit more of that into every single day in the lives of Canadian women. Um, and the theme for this year, for 2017, is Be Bold for Change. Yep. Yep. And um, I was wondering what that looks like in your life right now, yep. and also how you practice the courage to you know, be bold for yeah. change. Yeah, um, yeah. for me, uh, being bold sort of is synonymous to being fearless. Mm -hmm. I feel like throughout, whether it's been in sport, my life, my whatever that happens to be, um, I take the plunge. 
Uh, it's never gonna be perfect. It's never gonna be 100%. I'm probably never gonna be totally right, um, but it's right for me in the moment, mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm willing to fail and learn from that, because mm -hmm. if I don't take those steps, I'm never gonna grow. Um, and so I, I try to make those little bite-sized pieces, and the more that I do that, the more confidence I get um, to continue to change and grow. So I know I push my teens uh, to be a little bit uncomfortable mm -hmm. um, because that's where the growth is. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I love that, uh, the being fearless. I know a lot of times I, I think about it as, um, you know, confidence is, is just like any other muscle. You yes. know, it's, it's something that it, every day when we use it, we practice it with it, we practice a little more, it gets a bit stronger. Yep. And I'm wondering if there's anything that you do on a daily basis that might be physical or a routine, a, a habit that you feel really builds, you know, helps to build that fearlessness. So something yeah. you're, you're literally doing on a, a habit on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting. For me, it's probably being mindful and, and, and movement for me. So um, whether it's a walk around the block and get some fresh air, or um, sitting and meditating for those five minutes in my quiet space with my my you know hot water and lemon as my like little five minutes in the morning. Um, it's just it's coming back to that grounding place for me. Um, yeah, it, it helps to remove some of that chatter mm -hmm. and, and kind of gets a little. I, I'm a pretty high energy person, so it helps to get some of that energy out, but get mm -hmm. me back to being centered of like, what's my purpose? What am I doing? Um, how can I go out into the world today? So, would you say that the more grounded you feel on a daily basis or in your week, the more, the more powerful or the more yes. fearless you actually are? The better I can be to everybody around me. And I think that for me, that's one of the core things for why yoga, that we, like one of our big mission statements is that mm -hmm. we want to make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. um, that sounds really grandiose and huge and how do I get there? Um, and we believe that if people are just a little bit connected to us, they're going to be better human beings, which means that they're going to be, they're going to show up better to their family, they're going to show up better at work, they're going to be better to themselves mm -hmm. um, just by being connected to our community. Mm -hmm. So that's our sort of like baby steps. The more people that we can touch that sort of get connected to us, the better the entire world's going to be because we're bringing something that's very mindful. It's, it's good for your health. It's good for your body, mind, soul, all of those pieces that you can't help but show up as a better human being. Yeah. Um, yeah, so those are sort of the baby steps to the big goal. Totally. <laughs> oh my gosh, totally. Yeah. So one of the questions that we got in uh, over through our poll is um, just people curious about any specific leadership tools or tips that Carrie feels she absolutely couldn't live without. 100% my calendar. <laughs> My calendar for me has my work life and my personal life um, in it in one place. Um, it helps to create a sense of calm for me. I know what's coming up. I can build space for my friends, my families, the things that I'm passionate about. Mm. Um, and to build space for me to just be me. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's I take a quiet moment, I. Um, I just build in time for myself and my friends and the things that I'm passionate about. Mm. Um, if I lost my calendar, <laughs> I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> I I love that because you know you're you're. Some people would think that using a calendar would feel really rigid. You know mm -hmm. that your life is is dictated by a calendar. But I love what you said about it actually helps you to create and carve out space. Yes. Yeah, yeah and, and it makes me remember what's really important to me. Mm -hmm. So, for example, this morning I had, you know, I, I need to get up and do a little bit of meditation because I'm not going to make it to my floor bar class mm -hmm. at, at 7 o'clock because I have a meeting yeah. um, at about 7.45, so I was going to miss that. Um, so I had to sort of shift a little bit and, mm -hmm. and, 
and figure out how do, how do I get myself to be grounded if I'm not going to have my my regular routine. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it, it's it's super helpful for me. Yeah, yeah, and I think sometimes like with that intentional planning, mm -hmm. it helps to keep the priorities where they need to be. Because yeah. a lot of people when they they say that they don't have time for something, I go back to them and I typically ask you know, where it falls on their priority list yep. because we have time for our priorities. Yes. You know? Yes. It's all a choice. Oh, totally. Right? Everything is a choice. Yeah, that that's for sure. Um, so this kind of segues just a little bit, um, but in terms of actually defining your personal time and your professional time and kind of where, where you work, you know, how you kind of do that with the work-life balance, you know, how do you shut things off? How do you shut your mind off? How do you, you know, what, what does that look like for you? Yeah, um, for shutting my mind off, that's what exercise is for me. Mm. Um, as soon as I go into one of our studios, I walk into that yoga space and everything goes away. Mm. So for me, yoga isn't so much about the movement of my body, it's about the calming of my mind. Mm -hmm. um, if I go for a run, it's that meditative, um, it's that meditative moments for me where I do probably my best thinking. Whenever I come out of fitness, yes. any, whether it's I go to a meditation class or whatever that is, um, it, the chatter goes away for me. I get some clarity in my mind mm -hmm. that that for me is so beneficial for me, but I think it's beneficial for everybody around me. Yeah. Uh, I just I get I get calmer in myself. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing for me. But and I think that what I would say to everybody else is find that thing that does that for you. Yeah. Um, when I was growing up, it was either arts, so I did a lot of painting and mm -hmm. creative. I used to write. I do a lot of like poems and stuff just to get sort of my words and my thoughts out. Mm. Um, and I and I need that physical. I I'm very high energy, so I need to get some of that energy mm -hmm. out. But I'd say find that thing for you that gets you to be a place of calm, mm -hmm. where you can kind of calm the noise in your brain mm -hmm. um, and and just become a little bit more mindful. Yeah, and yeah. it's so interesting to listen to your answers. Yeah. And again, it goes back to you know calming things, getting to be more grounded, yeah. to be in turn more mm -hmm. more fearless, to be more powerful. And yeah. you know that's one of the reasons I really wanted to kick off our, our interview series with with Carrie is because our whole theme is powerful living explored and yeah. living, learning, and leading from a powerful place. They aren't separate. Yeah. Um, and and I carry, you know, is such a, a great, here's the word, role model, <laughs> great role model for that. And, uh, you know, I think, I think that's, you guys can see that today. Um, so I'll, I'll segue into a bit of a business question, and yeah. I, I'll admit that this is my question. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I, I very much know like the and respect the vision of why yoga to go national, and um, I, I think it's really exciting. And anything that we can do to support that and to help build, you know, strong Canadian women and men and families by kind of really integrating these uh, concepts is is so amazing. Um, my question is, how do you go about handling, stick handling that huge vision, really big vision to yep. go national, you know, knowing that you're here and you want to get there yep. and what are, you know, what are the pieces in play? How do you make it down? You know, how do you break it down to those critical steps? How do you make the key decisions, the right decisions? Yep. And most of all, you know, it goes back to how do you, how do you make sure that you lead your team, yourself and your team, in a way that doesn't allow you to stay small yep. if that's not the intention? Yeah, yeah. Great question. Um, yeah, I, I guess I've gone through it once before mm -hmm. <laughs> um, when I was at the Olympics. So I was there for five years from startup, you know, one of the first 50 people through till we were, you know, tens of thousands of people to when we actually dissolved the organization. So I got to kind of see the full life cycle of an organization. And so I had a team of one when I started and a team of kind of 40 when I when we were at our peak. Um, so for me, it's, you know, we had this great goal of, of connecting all of Canada and the world to the Olympic Games that were happening in Vancouver. So mm -hmm. one small city trying to connect to the world. Um, we had a great platform being the Olympics, but 
You know, Vancouver had never done it before. We didn't know what we were getting into. Mm -hmm. um, as as the CEO John Furlong said, you know, it was like drinking from a fire hose for five <laughs> years. It just yeah. kept coming. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But really, for me and the team, it was making sure I had really great people as a foundation from my management team um, that I knew were gonna be with me, were on the same page in terms of values and vision and what it meant to be a team and hard work and, and all of those pieces. So that for me was kind of the starting point is get that solid team in the beginning that you know you can, uh, you're in it together. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's, a, it's a very different space of relationships for those people when you first start out a business of, of who you have around you mm -hmm. and pick really well. Um, that would be like one of my best kind of initial comments about mm -hmm. building a business. Make sure you have the, like, the really good foundational people around you mm -hmm. um, and then build from there. And when I was, uh, when I was leading those people to you know, execute this really big vision, it was about breaking it down. Um, breaking it down into sizable goals, they would gain some confidence, um, and just keeping them really focused on what was ahead mm -hmm. and not necessarily think, yes, this is the vision, but here, here's the things right in front of you to kind of keep you moving. Um, I was sharing a story with Charlene about one of the girls on my team in, in payroll. And the day the game started, which was everyone's kind of big day, okay, the day is finally here, mm -hmm. we're, gonna, we're gonna do all this stuff. Uh, she had to exit a thousand people on day one. So they were torch reeling and, and construction, things that were done yeah. uh, the day the game sort of started. And, and those, you know, those days from February 12th until the end, um, she looked back and she said, how did I do that? Like, I exited about 3,000 people in like 10 days. Like, that's crazy. Like, <laughs> how, how, how did I not know that I was doing that when I was doing it yeah. in all these wonderful games and I was still participating and I was still super engaged, and, but I did like a crazy amount of work and <laughs> how did that happen? And I said, because I gave you bite-sized chunks, you'd gained all this confidence getting up to that point mm -hmm. and I just kept you focused yeah. on the things that mattered in the moment and didn't let you get lost in the chatter. And, and connected you to some of those successes that were going on around you mm. that helped to fire you up and give you energy mm. to kind of keep going. And, and she just, she mm. was awe-inspired by the things that she did and didn't even realize. Yeah. But I do think it's, it's about taking those moments um, uh, to explore the successes as well because you yeah. get so focused on doing yes. that when you actually look back and see how much you've accomplished, yeah. um, I, I think we'd be amazed. Yeah. Right? It's it's that reflection that I don't think we do enough of because yeah. we're always searching and searching for the next big thing. Mm -hmm. um, at at Y Yoga I just had this big town hall and brought everybody together and, and the two big themes of the town hall was one, let's celebrate our successes. Yeah, so like what true. did we do in these last three months? And I had this slide of all of these things, and I said, this is just some of the highlights. Yeah. And every time one would come, oh yeah, we did that. Oh yeah, that was amazing. And, oh, I can't believe. And I was like, yeah, these were like big things <laughs> we accomplished, guys. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then the other focus for us was coming back to the why. We just talked about the why, like, yeah. why are we here? What's, our, what's everybody's why? Are we mm. all on the same page? Like, let's ground ourselves again so we totally. can take that next leap. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I do think it's about recalibrating all the time. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. You get caught in the, in the race and the stuff and the, I'm putting in so many hours, like, why am I doing this? <coughs> just regrouping all mm -hmm. those people around you as a team, uh, and especially the leaders, mm -hmm. as to go, are we still all on the same page? Is it still resonating with each mm -hmm. of us? Can we keep moving forward? And um, and just like, why are we all here? Yeah. And to just really reflect on that, because I think that's that's what's going to help to ground you to continue to move on. Yeah. To so continue true. to grow, continue to be successful, continue to sort of help each other rise up when you see one person sort of faltering in terms of energy or. Um, or something that they were so hopeful with didn't work out. It's about okay, but it's okay to fail. But you're here for a reason, and and let's kind of how can I help to support you? Mm -hmm. How can we how can we sort of fix it or move on or um, 
let's go for a yoga class so yeah. you can kind of uh, wash it away a little bit but yeah totally. it's oh I love that yeah. I think like there's so many nuggets in in what yeah. you said and you know just if I could pick just a couple of them it would be bite-sized pieces but then focusing in on those bite-sized pieces uh, laser focus take away the chatter and we, yep. we definitely talk a lot about that uh, in powerhouse and the other pieces yeah the the acknowledging yeah. um, celebrating the wins and yes. the greatness and you know our program is called women we celebrate yeah. because we we don't celebrate enough you yeah. know how what we're actually getting done and what's so uh, what's so amazing yes. so um, yeah well a lot of a lot of really great nuggets in, in what you just shared with us so um, I, I want to just take a moment and, and thank Carrie very much for being part of our interview today typically when we end out a, a power talk we yeah. usually ask women to either share an ask or a challenge with who is watching okay. uh, you know who we're conversing okay. with yeah. Yeah. so I would I'd, I'd like to encourage you to do the same if you have an yeah. ask or a challenge for for uh, our powerhouse women yeah. what would it be hmm that's interesting an ask or a challenge I would probably say to every woman out there take a moment for yourself hmm. um, to to really become understanding of what's important to you mm -hmm. because once you understand what's important to you and you take that moment to and, and just really you know I, the words authentic um, I think it's overused a little bit um, but it's just and, and being okay with what's really important to you mm -hmm. um, of where you are right now mm -hmm. because you need to come back to that like that why you, your own personal why like why are you here and what's important because every decision that you make every priority every um, ounce of your time mm -hmm. um, all of those pieces should come back to your why if it's not supporting your why of where you are today um, then then it's probably chatter yeah so true yeah, so that's so, my challenge. Figure awesome. Out, figure out what your why is. <laughs> so you heard it here first. Take a moment. Figure out your why. That's really uh, everything that we have to share with you today. Uh, powerful living explored, living, learning, and leading from a very powerful place. Thank you, Carrie Dillon, for Thank being Thank you. With us. I'm happy to be the first one. <laughs> it's an honor. Thanks so much. Bye, everybody.